Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to draw a bulb in Affinity Designer, light bulb like this one. So first we'll do, draw a vector shape, proper vector and then we'll add some extra special effects. Alright, so let's get started. Here I am in the new blank canvas, it's square as you can see and the first thing we need to do is to simply draw a circle. So I'm using oval tool while holding shift. Now I can adjust the color move from this default gray one to something more yellow like this we just need the fill color without stroke color so we can get rid of that perfect start let's reposition this shape in the center of our little artboard and now the second shape this will be rectangle somewhere around here let's move it a little bit it should snap to the center like this Cool. Select all and now we are ready to unite those two shapes, add them together into one shape. Finishing touch with our corner tool like this. Select both points and make them curly like this simply using corner tool. Dragging outside now we can bake the appearance and here's our light bulb. And now we just need to draw this bottom part of the light bulb, maybe using this rectangle tool with built-in round corners. This time we need some grey color and we will set up those round corners to be 50%. So we have like half of oval, half of the circle at each end, like this. I will duplicate this object by holding command and simply drag it out. Now scale to the center and then command J to repeat this duplication. This way I create a copy of it. Now I can stack them together, maybe something like that. And that's how I finish up my light bulb here from the bottom side. We can also unite this into one shape. So add from geometry menu and that's one shape right now. So that's perfectly fine. Light bulb, full vector, very nice if you're seeking for a simple flat vector, maybe export to SVG or something like that. But I will go a one step further and I will add some special effects on it. So I will start with gradient, not from the center but here, from here. We can modify the colors in our gradient. Gradient is a simply a fill for our shape, so that's still a vector more orange outside like this so we got a little bit of this 3d feel C cool not bad good start let's add gradient to the bottom part of it as well in this case i will move it from left to the right this is not radial gradient simple line i will make it brighter at the end i don't need saturation this is all in gray a little bit of noise and now we can simply adjust this gradient maybe we need to make the other side a little bit brighter too we can experiment with four points or simply move the middle point more to the center like this all right that should be okay we can redraw the top part of it so if i drag the shape tool again and redraw the top of it. I will have option to make this a little bit different. I can modify gradient only in this shape now. So if I go back to gradient tool, I can make this gradient a little bit shorter. Maybe like this. So now we got a little bit of difference between those two layers. All right, nice. Now I'm going to duplicate this whole shape. Right click on the layer and duplicate. On the copy, I will apply additional gradient like this from bright to darker color. I want the top to be bright and the bottom to be darker. This is duplicate. I still got the original gradient we created a moment ago. As you can see, this is just a copy. I got the original one. And now I will change the blending mode for the second gradient. Maybe overlay will do. 
feel free to play around here and ex experiment with different blending modes. I will think I will stick with overlay with reduce opacity. So I need to reduce this opacity. 100% is too strong. So this is my way of blending two gradients. And by playing with opacity and blending gradients, we kind of mess up the vector file right now. If you export this, probably mm, it will be already in raster. There's still hope to have vector, but I don't think this overlay blending mode will do. So I think it's already we are already working on raster file as the final output. So we can add some layer styles to it. I applying layer style to this group that I just made. I group both gradients so I can just apply a style to it. Outer glow. So I got this outside light. This is our outer glow. It's too big right now. I will just keep it like 150. Keep in mind you can move the slider but maximum value is 100. But you can type anything you want even higher than 100 from keyboard. And now I will add 3D effect to it. This is too small. I need to type higher value from keyboard. Much better. A little bit too strong. So let's reduce opacity for it. There's a brightness opacity slider. We can add softness and reduce the overall opacity of this 3D effect. Like this. So we got a little bit of glow. Alright, by adding those effects, we kind of mess up the vector file. Keep that in mind. Now we cannot export this as 100% vector SVG. If you want to do that, you need to stay away from those raster effects. We can pull this outside of this group so we don't have this glow on our bottom part. Like this. Alright, we're almost there. Maybe let's create a little backdrop using rectangle tool so you get color behind not only white blank paper so I draw rectangle and now I'm try to pick a proper color for this project I can keep it like in similar colors like yellows but we can go for the contrast as well if you we jump to like blue color so that's also something we can do maybe I will stick with contrast here so blue or violet drawing oval here just at the bottom of the project i'm going to use this oval as my shadow so dark oval and now we can blur this using gaussian blur from the layer styles let's multiply this and this way we can get a nice shadow here okay we can even add more details to this project if you want so let's add something inside using rectangle tool rotation and in this case i will not use a fill color i will just use a stroke color for this one so for the rectangle we go with a stroke like this with our fill color we will need to turn this into shape curves all right and then using node tool we can modify the overall shape add one node here to the center that's nice. And then we can also use our corner tool once more to round some corners like this maybe. Cool. It's too short. I think we need to stretch it up a bit. So let's just pull it up. Make it a little bit longer. Nice. And now we can bake the appearance of corners. So I can go back to my corner tool bake the appearance perfect now it's a normal curve without any special corners apply and let's change the color of it first it shouldn't be dark like this that's our glowing part so it need to be bright cool change blending mode to overlay you can go inside the layer styles here reduce opacity from here and apply outer glow to this element so it is we got this glow inside the light bulb all right and that was our finishing touch here's our little bulb keep in mind this version of it is definitely not a vector one if you roll back few steps 
at some point we got this nice flat vector bulb you can also add a simple gradient to it and this way you can keep it as a vector export as svg but we add additional effects we blend two gradients we add layer stars several different raster effects all right so this version cannot be exported to svg but you can still use it as nice raster png icon all right guys i hope you enjoy our today's tutorial for more videos about affinity designer don't forget to check my youtube channel or even subscribe to it if you want to see my new videos that i upload every week all right guys see you in the next tutorial bye